My name is Terry. This is very hard for me because I'm a mom of two children. And my daughter went to heaven on March 15th. She was sick for at least six months, maybe a little longer. She had mono, and it was typical mono. And then in one week, it turned a little weird. She started having high fevers, and you know the ibuprofen wasn't really working. We were going back and forth between Tylenol and ibuprofen, and it wasn't working. Calling her doctor constantly, taking her to the ER for them to tell us that she's dehydrated. Her stomach started to slightly swell, and then I knew something was not right. That was a Sunday night. We noticed that. The next day on Monday, I waited for her to wake up because she didn't really sleep good that night. And I took her to the ER. And they did an imaging on her. She had spots on her liver. The doctor pulled me out of the room and showed me the imaging. And they made it sound like she was dying. They asked us where we wanted to go because they felt like she needed to go to a special, a special hospital. And we chose Cardinal Glennon because we were familiar. We went to Cardinal Glennon. Well, let me backtrack. We came home and we packed because we got permission to take her ourselves. We got to Cardinal Glen a couple hours later and they were already waiting for us. We got upstairs and, you know, they had a hard time controlling her fevers. Her first day was 37 days. It took three weeks before she stopped having fevers. And after three days of being there, they told us that she had HLH. They did a bone marrow um, plug out of her lower back, which would be in your hip bones. And then they also told us that she had lymphoma, Epstein-Barr driven T-cell lymphoma, systemic non-Hodgkin's. My husband and I were completely clueless what we were dealing with. As our world fell apart about the cancer diagnosis, we had no idea that the HLH was actually the culprit, which is what driven the lymphoma to pop up. Sorry. Her first day was 37 days and we got to come home for Christmas, finally. She was admitted November 8th. We were home for four days. We had our, our Christmas together on the 19th because we were afraid she was too delicate to make it to Christmas. We were right. She ended up dropping um, blood out of her rectum, which was her body's reaction to having C. diff. We didn't know that, so we took her back. And her second stay was about 30 days. We got to come home. Her second stay was probably the hardest stay for her because she was terrified she was going to get sick again. Um, we were in Cardinal Glennon every other day for infusions, chemotherapy, and all of that. Um... We only made it, I think, five days total for her second stay home. We went back. We spent a third stay. Um, it was about 32 or 33 days, and we got to come home. That time we came home with IV, blood pressure. Um, I basically was her nurse at home, with Dad and I. But Dad was trying to work during this time. Um... We had to convince her to be a normal 12-year-old. She wanted to sit on the couch the whole time. She was terrified that if she did anything, it was going to result in her being back in the hospital. This time we made it a little longer. 
but she was severely weak at this point. She didn't leave the couch very much. Um, we were at Cardinal Glennon every other day, so really totally we were only home four days, maybe three. And she ended up having to go back because she had um, a fever spike, which is very common with HLH when you have flare-ups. So she makes it back, and uh, she goes straight into a flare-up. Dad took her this time because I ended up, I keep catching fever-induced colds during this time because I'm autoimmune. And I'm, when you're in the hospital, you don't sleep a lot. You worry about your baby. Her third stay resulted in a lot of seizures because of high blood pressure. Me fighting with nurses and doctors about medicines because they kept wanting to send her to the PICU for 12 hours. Wean her off, send her back up. It was a mess. She came out of the flare-up and was doing very well, actually. Um, probably the best we had seen her in months. She was, we were waiting for her ANC to start climbing after her chemotherapy. And uh, I felt like she was in such good condition that I could actually go home and spend some time with our son for a couple days. Our son is 13 and high functioning autistic. During the, this whole time, I hadn't seen him very much except for the times that we were home. And I was able to have the doctor approve for him to come up for a weekend to spend with her, which I'm so thankful they allowed us. So when I came home, um, this was after he had already visited for that week, I came home. That Saturday, my husband called me in the evening and said she's spiking a fever again. So I figured, okay, we're starting another flare-up. Um, the next morning, I got up and I came back up to Cardinal Glennon. She was completely fine. No fever, no nothing. She seemed to be doing okay. That night, her oxygen is starting to dip, which is very common when she's in a flare-up, an HLH flare-up. She... Seemed okay in the morning. She had a weird cough that was a little wet. Um, and it was bothering her because she was so tired. She couldn't find a position to get comfortable. So I just jumped in the bed with her, leaned up a pillow against my chest, and I let her lay down and sleep. For two hours we slept like that. And that was the last time <laughs> I got to hold my baby. Within a matter of hours, we were going down to the PICU because she was on 15 liters of oxygen and we couldn't keep her oxygen flow healthy. So the charge nurse th thought it was best to maybe put her on a CPAP BiPAP and they only did that down in the PICU. Which, okay, I was okay with going because that floor was very afraid of my daughter's condition. She was the worst or the sickest child on the floor, I should say. the charge down there the main doctor came to me and said we think we need a venter and she, judging by how her condition is she'll probably be on the ventilator for about a week I said okay this was probably 10 30 at night dad had came back up because he had went home he came back up he went home that morning had to come back that evening I'm so thankful he did because I needed that support during this time my daughter was on the CPAP BiPAP when we said goodbye to her to leave for the procedure for the vet ventilator. And she asked me to jump in the bed with her to hold her. And they wouldn't let me. I regret that. I should have just did it, but it's okay. We waited for hours. Finally at 3 o'clock. They came and got us and said they got her vetted. She looks okay, but that they did have to resuscitate her once. That her organs were starting to fail, but they were giving her medicine to help with that. They had done a catheter, and when we finally got to go in there, there was nothing but blood coming through that catheter. She was so frail looking. 
I hated seeing my daughter vented, but I was so hopeful and walking in faith. I touched her and talked to her because they told me that she could hear me, even though she was in a, a medical induced coma. And her vitals started going crazy because I said, honey, it's mom. I just want you to know I love you and dad and I are here with you. When her vitals started going crazy, I told my husband I needed to go upstairs. I didn't want to be responsible for stressing my daughter out. I didn't want to do that to her. I love her too much to stress my daughter. So he said, that's fine, babe. I'll stay here and watch her while you go get some sleep. Because I had been up for almost 24 hours at this point. Went upstairs and I prayed to God and he washed over me and told me that her body was broken. And I already knew that. But no mother or parent wants to hear that. And I still had faith. Because I know my daughter was so strong. I laid down. I wasn't even asleep a half an hour. My husband called me and said they want to do an ECMO on her. That the ventilator wasn't helping. And that the ECMO was the last possible thing they could do to help her. I said, okay, whatever we need to do to save my baby. So they did the ECMO on her and she seemed okay. Finally got in to see her hours later. And all her vitals looked fantastic. They had actually woken her up to have her do a few things to see if she was responding. And she was. They put her back in the medical induced coma. This was probably 9 o'clock in the morning. In between 1 and 2, we got a phone call saying that we needed to come down to the PICU that she was coding. They put us in the room next to her and I could hear her flatlining. And I just dropped to my knees and started praying to God, please, please save my baby. We had a nurse coming in every so many minutes updating us. After 10 minutes, they said that even if they were to save her, they didn't know what kind of brain damage she would have from lack of oxygen or what her organs would look like and what quality of life she'd have. And I knew that my baby made her choice and that I needed to respect that. And then a little past two, I said goodbye to my daughter for the last time ever. She was so beautiful. Her skin was glowing. I'm so thankful for the gift of a daughter that God gave me for 12 years. I miss her every day. There's not a moment that goes by. I don't think of her. Her, my son, are my everything. I still walk in faith. I thank God for giving us his son. And sacrificing himself for us when we were not worthy. But because of him, my daughter has eternal life. She gets to frolic in heaven with Jesus and all of her family. What more could anybody ask for? My daughter's not in pain. She has a new body and a new name. She no longer is hurting. She's frolicking, painting sunsets. Our bodies, our skin longs to touch our children and that is very hard and even though I go through my grief every day without my daughter it makes me stronger because I know she's wrapping her little beautiful wings around me every day with me loving me loving her family her friends her animals I tell you her story because two things. One, HLH awareness. Know what you're dealing with. 
It's a silent killer. Some people don't know they have it until it's too late. We had no idea. And two, God didn't take my daughter. The devil did. The devil caused the sickness in my child that was not truly curable except with bone marrow transfer and she didn't make it. Walk in faith, people. Keep your faith. Keep hope alive in you. Because that hope is God. My walk just became extraordinary. I already believed in God and Jesus before all of this. And her death made my faith even stronger in him. Because to me, he did my daughter the best blessing he gave her. A miracle. A second life of eternity. I can't do that for her. Only he could. And because of that, I'm so thankful that my walk now is going to be a straight and narrow path because I want to be with Jesus someday and I want to be with my daughter again and the rest of my family who's up there. And that's a goal of mine now in life. Nothing else matters. Doing the right thing on this planet, helping people, bringing as many people with me as possible. And I just, I know there's a lot of parents who, when they lose a child, they turn and say, oh, oh God, how could you do this? No, thank him. Thank Jesus for holding on to your baby and keeping them so safe until you yourself can get there. Because at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Is that you believe in Jesus. You believe in God. You believe that there is a place holding your child, the safest of the safest that you can get. Keeping faith, walking in faith every day, washing yourself in faith, being in faith. And that is the best thing a mother in my situation could have. And I learned, you know, faith forward all issues to heaven. I'm thankful. I'm thankful, and that is what I do. When I'm struggling in moments of hurt and pain, I turn it over to Christ, and I ask him to just tell my daughter I love her, miss her, tell her stories about us and how much she is loved. I'm still a mother of two. I'm just raising one on this plane and raising one in heaven. So I ask you, take a leap of faith Believe in your Savior because he believes in you. Thank you.